Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're out to say welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Free Run, Season 1, Episode 8. I am extremely excited. Me too. Uh, I think that we are going to watch a massacre. A very quick massacre. Yeah. The very beginning of this episode, just a very quick five-second massacre. I'm aware time has passed, and in that time lies opportunity for Aura the guillotine to have grown stronger. Yeah, amassed some strength, uh, strength in numbers, strength in power. That being said, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that Freerun's going to just obliterate Drot, I like, believe his name strong, is. pretty strong, you know. The Executioner, one of the Executioners. One of the ex I mean, Aura the Guillotine is a really great intimidating name, and I'm sure that whenever we hopefully eventually meet this person, I will probably love their character design, and they actually will be a fearsome foe. Well, we have to but get I, through Lord Lugner first. Honestly, I'd be a little... He's scarier than Drat, Drat the Executioner. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Drat. I still think Free Red can handle it. Easy. Comfort. Ready? Yeah. Sweet. They're gonna die, dude. <laughs> I am Drot. Dead. I like her voice actress a lot. Me too. What the fuck? Magical wire. Do we get to learn the spell if we defeat him? Demon kind spells. Okay. What is the song? この人を何とかするのは無理そうだ。この程度で勝利を確信。そこはダメだね。<laughs> Oh my god. Woo! Oh! I love her. I hope they don't blame it on her, you know? God, she's so cool. I don't cool. think they would be... Maybe publicly they might, but I think that uh, Graf Granite uh, thinks not very highly about the demons in actuality. So, did I get it right that magical wire is a spell in itself? A, a demon kind spell. Humanity's magic doesn't stand a chance. I think that that's an extremely versatile spell. I know, I really that like That must it. be so useful. I wonder if it's like, after you, you know, cast the spell, if it's like in existence now, or you have to like use aura actively to maintain it. Right. And also, I feel like you'd have to practice with it so you don't cut yourself. Yeah. Oh. Looks amazing. Hmm. Fast eater, Fern. She is already started. I hope they just like meet her on the street. She's just gonna be there. Yeah. Damn. <sighs> Let's go, Stark! 
そのハンカチあげる<笑><笑>どうしたんですか腰が抜けちゃったみたい Oh my gosh <笑>ドラートの魔力が探知できない They can detect each other's magic バカだね油断しすぎだ私たちはアウラ様の懐刀油断した程度で死ぬと思うか I hate him 魔法使いは言った Come on, peace on voice, but they're really all of Aura's executioners. She really sent her best people in there. Did Freerun go to them first? あの魔法使いが手ざれであることくらいわしにそれが永平にあっさりと囚われたんだ私は永平殺しの罪の重さを理解しているもう一度だけ聞く恐れの方はどこにまったくねおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおお
I mean, humans are doing the same thing. I love that it's flams. That's so fucking awesome. Oh, that reflection right? in her eyes. <gasps> she was she with her when she put the barrier up? Oh my god. Is that the barrier magic? It's like creating it's like heavenly. ozone layers. <laughs> Passed by a genius a thousands of years ago. How observant. <laughs> Think he's just gonna give it to you? Torture might be the way. Mm. God, I love that little knife flip. Do not cut his hands. You're scared, but you still go. More magical rope. Two different kinds in the same episode. Best show ever. You got this, Stark. Fuck him up. Not even looking at him. I love that he got in between, but I am. Hell yeah! For your entrusted, you guys. He can control his blood no matter what. Woo! Oh my god! He's not alone, idiot. Hell yeah! He was given a certain amount of time, like with the dragon. Yes! Oh my god, she's so cool. Look at her! She's terrifying! Hell fucking yeah. God, I love them so much. Whew. My blood is on those two. Oh, it can no. like track. Oh, fuck. If you had been struck by that spell, it would have killed- Modified, Modified to specialize in killing Sweet. demons? Who taught you that spell? She's modifying spells that she's teaching The demon burn. killing spell. Woo! Jeez. Oh, a little bit of blood on her face. He remembers where he recognized her from. He has battle experience, though. Oh. She's doing the same As thing. Anyone else in history? Repeated oh history. my God, Freer in the, the Slayer. Slayer? Nah. Yes. One of the.
the geniuses I despise. Okay, that was Free Run Season 1, Episode 8. I love everything about this show. I know. This is a great show. Magical Wire. You got Magical blood. Rope. Doing things with blood. I have said it before. There's a few different, I would say, shows. We can go with, like, Avatar The Last Airbender and Bloodbending. We can go into Jujutsu Kaisen with certain, you know, techniques. See, okay, I love blood manipulation as love well. It. But what I love about Freerin is that blood manipulation is, like, the base level like of, like, oh, that's so cool. You have fucking, in the same episode... Magical wire and then magical rope. What is that? I've never read or okay, seen a story like, that has how some. How much do you actually think the rope is magic and that he just couldn't cut it? Well, no. Knife? Okay, I I look. I I think he could have cut it. Maybe. Obviously, that's a possibility. But what <laughs> is I this would rope magical. I can't get through but it. But it wouldn't surprise fun. me at all if you like tie a regular knot, but then you're able to like strengthen it with a specific spell, or well, you can if we're learn. Dealing with magical thread. What if in that rope there is a you know thread yeah. of that magical thread? That could be cool. Or it could just be like a barrier in of itself, which is another thing that I want to talk about. Oh my god, Flom's barrier. Flom's barrier. <sighs> Seeing the little image of her putting it over just the sapling oh, was tiny. so cool. Very sweet. We had, uh, this whole episode was very heavy about uh, the idea of what different groups of magic users uh in terms of demons to humans to elves to, to anyone across the board how there are differences as you would think that they focus research yeah do they focus on gathering as many spells as possible and learning as many things as possible like free run are they trying to hone one certain spell specifically that they will master and then even like modify and it'll be stronger and stronger after 10 years of practicing it every day there's different uh ways that they uh handle magic view magic but also like the chance of it getting stronger is different because with the demons mm -hmm. like elves they have like the longevity of life as long as they don't die yeah uh but humans it's like oh well they're not only is their magic more basic, but they, even if they are strong, they won't be as strong as a demon who has lived longer and perfected their spell for longer. But it also seems like through human nature and how human lives are shorter, it somehow just like it, it expresses that like growth of like magic and stuff itself, you know, mm -hmm. like. The, the idea of evolution within right. that. And it's an idea that I don't think makes much sense to the demons necessarily. Because there was a line from, oh, what's her name? Linny? Yeah. She said that Drat underestimated Freerin. And Lugnar had like a weird expression, a weird kind of like underestimated her, you know? Like that, like he was trying to figure out or understand that phrase as if he's so conceited, confident in his executioner status that, I don't know, maybe that word didn't necessarily make sense to him. Maybe he heard that word and was like, am I underestimating her? Still hadn't remembered where he'd seen her from. Yeah. He obviously does underestimate, though. They don't even sense fur. But it, th there's just been so much time that's passed since I'm... Like, I don't know what their interaction with other mages has been since right. they've been, so like, they really, awakened. That's why I'm bringing yeah. it up of, like, they even underestimate human mages. Yeah. Because that's what we get with Fern. Yeah. Like, not only did Drat underestimate this elf, underestimate this elf mage that's been alive for thousands of years and fought, mm -hmm. you know, originally against the demons. Which There's is, also humans that uh, have continued to evolve and their spells are evolving. And as uh, Freerun had said, you lack battle experience to Drat, which means they haven't been coming in much contact okay. with, you know, fighting. Two things. One... Like, Fern is the best of both worlds, and, like, one, yeah, humans can be capable mages themselves, but having the book of information, you know, the grimoire of information that is Freerun as your master, you're already, like, 
way ahead of the game and going to over, yeah. you, you know. Like, right, not only with, like, the abundance of spells yeah. and obviously the experience, but in this episode alone, we learned something incredibly interesting about Freerin, which is that she has the talent or ability to modify spells. So, yes, that. I want to talk about that. But while we're here, so... What do you think of the idea of, okay, so last episode we were given the idea of so so you won't be alone in the future mm -hmm. and past guildmates like leaving things for Freerin. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the idea that Flom left Freerin for the world or for like expediting some type of like growth in magic and evolution? Like nobody's going, obviously like it's not Freerin's nature to go out and like like protect like protect everybody first but it seems like it was a little bit like flom's nature because of the idea of having the barrier and then through not only being one person to protect everybody like if if you know this if free desired it but just having her around and in the world and learning all these spells and being able to have students of her own right you know? uh flom is like a himel where when we first went to qual in that little village himel had been going to check up on it every single year to check on like the seal every year and then the year that the seal was supposed to be broken and Freerin appears, he's like, yeah, Himel trusted that you would be like, you would be here. You yeah. wouldn't let the seal be broken and Qual be back and, you know, bad things to happen. Uh, and Freerin, when we think about Flom's books, the grimoire, the grimoire that uh, people fake across the whole world, it seems like there's tons of these fake scripts, but the one real book was hidden in a place that only Freerin could get to. That I think that that yeah. goes with what you had just said, that, like, Freerin is the book. Yeah. Freerin is the grimoire. She is everything that Flom needed to leave behind. I mean, honestly, it's the perfect idea if you are a human and you want your knowledge to ascend, like, your lifetime and to continue being helpful to the world then picking an elf as the person that you teach all those things to. It's accruing interest, basically. Oh, like, is, the knowledge uh, is. Lugnar uses the word uh, accumulating. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. I oh, Just while it's, like, fresh in my mind, I love... We've only gotten a couple instances, uh, instances of it in this show so far. I love the ac uh, action sequences. They're so cool, whether it's, like, j the, the thought behind the fight or how they portray it. Like, in... The, the most recent one this episode in the Stark and Fern battle, I loved just the depiction and framing of how Stark's, like, I don't know, judging out Lugnar and, like, you know, feeling him out. And then fucking in front of the moon, Fern comes down and then she descends leaving it. It is so cool. Dude. And, it, and they they say that she looks familiar to him and it ends up being what Freerun did in the past but what Freerun's doing right now at the same time, the connection through line there, that this is this is Freerun teaching the next generation of heroes. Yeah. You know, like like she is what Fl Flom's wealth of knowledge, and now she is creating this out of her, you know, what's it called? Her pupil, her apprentice. Yeah. That's the word. I love this sequence though. It's like as like i just love the team up and the camaraderie of like fern and stark and like off battle but seeing how they have each other's backs and they're both like mm -hmm. intelligent like as stark's running out the door fern still has like mm -hmm. the staff settled and ready and then very well and then i just want to watch the sequence of fern falling it is so freaking cool look oh still it's so watching cool them, like eye contact as she jumps down yeah but it also, like, shows in, like, a simple and cute way, like, how much uh, people will, ref like, kind of uh, create opportunities in, in to that show of a reflection of what they've learned. So what Fern and Stark do here is this tactic that they use is a tactic that they lasted in battle and they saw that it worked and Freerun's the one that came up with it, which was to Stark to go in and be the like distractor, if you will, to get a certain amount of time for the spellcaster, the mage, to be ready 
for a very powerful yeah. blast. Yeah. The, oh. And so they did that tactic again here with actually needing Fern when before they just needed Stark. But yeah. it seems like Fern is the like the necessary like piece here when fighting, let's say when when fighting demons, it seems like mages might be like the best uh bet. Well, to specifically have on your side. maybe specifically with with what you brought up, the idea of like modifying the spells to specialize it like this attack in killing demons, mm -hmm. being able to base it like it's making an advantage for yourself and giving them a weakness. Yeah. It's and it's cute and sassy that Fern doesn't realize. I mean, Fern is a a child of war and then was being raised in the middle of the woods and then was taken in by Freerin and her whole life has basically just been Hater and Freerin. Mm -hmm. And basically just Freerin now at this point. And so to her, she was taught that this was ordinary offensive magic, but to know that if that had hit the other demon, the demon girl, it would have actually completely killed her. That's just, that's not the ordinary Zoltrak. It's, it, it's so interesting because it's like you can see like, you can see it as a finished product now. That's how you'd initially look at it here. But what Fern's perspective, or the demon's perspective of it, and then Fern's perspective of what this attack is, you can like start to break down like all the little blocks that were stacked on this one attack over the course of mm -hmm. years, you know? And how can you modify a spell? Uh, being the person that helped humanity understand the spell in the first place. Yeah. One of the main front runners to being able to understand and then have humans use the spell, but also come up with defenses for it. Yeah. That shows that you had a great deal of understanding for it and you would need that to be able to then building block on top of it. You know the transition from Fern in front of the moon and yes, re like remembering Freerin? Free I wanted that because like when we got the transition, we saw like bodies that Freerin were standing on because of the flashback and the memory. I wanted that to be... That I wanted that to double as a flashback, but also what she had already done mm -hmm. to Aura, the guillotine, you know? That could have been interesting, but I think they wanted to see... I guess they want to give us more action For sure. next, next episode. But if they did want to skip the battle, they could have done that as, like, where they would have done the edit. Yeah. Into I the transition of, like, her being already done with her side of things. Dude, it was. it's so cool that... Like to defend herself, free room put like a little what mana like yeah, yeah. around her and neck, like it, a necklace, you know. And then Drat's like, Oh, okay, I get wow, you did that quick, but like, can you do that, you know, for all parts of your body? And how strong is it? And yeah. he just like, he's so cocky, and she's like, Wow, okay, what are you looking at? Or the okay. guillotine, it m yeah, it might not be. She has like a balancing scale. Yeah, but I okay. So I was looking at this, and oh, I thought that that was her axe, axe, but it's just one of her soldiers. Damn. I wouldn't be surprised if her power is somewhat similar to Drat or to Lugnar, in terms of uh, tiny thread-like magic that is very slicey. You know, yeah. I would not be surprised if that is what it is. And she is not, in fact, the demon that we see in the intro. No. Like my. I had guessed that that's who that was. But if Freerun's going to be defeating her in episode nine, which yep. would be next episode, then she can't be the one in the intro because that would be crazy. I'm Unless so we're getting like a new intro. But I, I don't know how I feel about getting a new intro. I love the intro. Uh, some other moments that I loved. I really, really loved Stark coming into the room and his hands shaking when he was cutting the rope. And that reminding Graf Granite of his son, yeah. but bringing it up in a, like verbally actually saying to this boy that has come to somewhat save him, like, you know, that's like a good sign. Like you, yeah, you're trembling, but you're still going to run in like you're, you're brave. Well, my favorite thing about it is that usually in shows, that's like an episode arc, like Oh, I'm trembling. Work through the fear. That's why you're brave. That right. proves you're brave. Next to episode, point where you're they're not done. Trembling anymore. Yeah, right. and it's like, oh no, we have touched upon this earlier in Stark's arc, and as we just got to know him, what that meant for him. He's currently just because he overcame one obstacle doesn't mean he's like perfect and fine. But they're using it as a through line into another connection with what you said. But I think that uh, also what the the show has shown us is that you don't necessarily that's not an obstacle that necessarily 
should or needs to be overcome because Aizen was still trembling. Yeah. And, and if anything, like, it was what showed him, like, he didn't want to forget and be null to fear. Fear is what drove him to be even stronger in his attacks and maybe yeah. even more uh, at an advantage of awareness and a sense of the battlefield that he still held on to those so simple human emotions of fear and he was able to, in the moment, you overcome that, but not only overcome it, but use it as his strength. That's not something that Stark should necessarily try to get rid of. Yeah. And I, I think that I'm used to people being like, that's a sign of weakness in, in shows. And there it gets to the point where they worked out their nerves and now they go in and they're like, breathe. And then they get right into it and they're not scared anymore. Yeah. But it's like way more realistic that you would still be scared. I think if someone goes onto a battlefield to fight, like like his his son had, uh, Granite's son had, you'd still be scared because aren't you scared of dying? Yeah. Uh, I... I cannot believe that we're... Uh, okay. So, just bear with... I, I love talking about the spells. There's blood on us right now, right? Oh, yeah. To track we're being us. tracked. Yes. Blood manipulation. Does there exist... I'm not saying it's going to happen. In the, in the world of free Ren, does there exist a spell that reverses, like, the tracking back on itself? Like, ooh, I have blood from this thing, and I can track it now. I mean, even, what, a couple episodes ago, we were tracking the whereabouts of uh those animals right what were they called they were like something oh, rats we were looking at their footprints yeah so that we could find the seed flower. rats yeah. and it was specific to seed rats i bet there's something like that like we could re we could reverse it on them track them down first they could i mean freerin probably has tons of spells that we couldn't even imagine because she's been accumulating them all this time uh different ideas <laughs> Uh, there might be a grimoire in this kind of establishment in this castle that has to do with how to upkeep the barrier. I'm interested to know if that is a spell that Freerin, in fact, actually knows or understands, or if that's something she could get as a reward. Maybe to this. Maybe there's something more to it that they don't even know, and Freerin does, and that's why she's going right towards. Flom, you mm -hmm. know, maybe it's not as simple as you can just turn it off, like that, that Flom had like other layers behind it or, you know, workarounds. There's ways to modify, maybe Freerun could even figure out how to modify it to lo last even longer or yeah. something like that. Um, maybe it's Freerun's barrier at this point, like she's alive still, you know. Mm hmm Oh, like maybe the person who cast it has to be alive? Yeah, or I don't know. Like a torch. I don't know what magic looks like after death in this world. I guess from from knowing nothing, the barrier had to withstand uh, thousands of years of I wonder if it like strengthens, it, like magic strengthens around. after death or something. I would think it would weaken. Just Like Nen, you know? though. It, but mm. it's, it's being maintained to some degree. There's an understanding so that the envoys could come in. Yeah. Which is intriguing. Uh, how could you create a barrier of so many layers, but then also let what you're protecting, like what you're keeping out in? Yeah. I'm like, how does that work? Um, the weak die no matter what. The idea of words and swords both kind of being uh, thought of as weapons and being sharp. The yeah. weak die no matter what. Do, do, do. Oh, geniuses. The idea oh. of Lugnar hating geniuses. And it being the connection between Free Ren and Flom. Yeah. Oh my god. And then phenomenal. maybe Fern. Like, maybe that's what we're seeing, you know? I hope. I think. I love this show. I I also love this show. I love the... I'm loving Stark. I know he's like a new character. I love the character be, designs. Right. I, the character designs are great. I'm loving what Stark's adding, though, in terms yeah. of like how he handles uh, kind of moral quandaries. Like he's not going to take, I feel like I could imagine some characters taking that necklace as Graf Granite said to do and present it to the guards to, you know, start evacuating. Yeah. But he's like, no, this is an expensive chair. I'm going to break it. I'm not going to be able to afford it. And he's still, even he, he's like worried about the injuries on this guy. He's like puts him over his shoulder I really like that even though he... I, I'm just loving this idea of this character that is trembling and scared, but they're still so empathetic and caring. And it really... he it His first in, introduction into this story, his first 
uh, story bit, what it was, the themes of it, is exactly who he is as a character. He is still completely true to who he was when we first met him. This mm -hmm. character that even though he was so scared, he ran in front of a dragon and has since then stayed in this village and will not leave them. But this time he was standing in front of Graf Granite and actually did something about it other than just his presence or aura. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Okay. Oh, you good? Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time.